Hi, I'm Michael Despezio, one of the authors of HMH Science Dimensions, and today I'd like to model one of the lessons from this program. The activity begins with me profiling the performance expectation from NGSS. Today, we are going to observe rocks, make models, and see what you can learn from a rock's appearance. Sound like fun? Yeah! Oh, great! As we teach, it's important for us to integrate the three dimensions that are profiled in NGSS. So those are the science and engineering practices, the cross-cutting concepts, and the disciplinary core ideas, or DCIs for short. We're going to be learning by doing science. Now, I got a question. Would you sooner read about science or do science? Do science! Fantastic. One of the things we're gonna do is construct an explanation. We're gonna say, hmm, I think this happens because I saw this. To first engage the students in this experience, you may wanna pose certain questions, but don't answer them. Let the students arrive at the answers to these after they've done the activity. This way, they're able to use the CER model to come up with reasonable evidence, reasoning, and why their claim might be true or not true. Think about patterns. What, what, what is a pattern? Yeah, what's a pattern? A pattern is something that repeats over and over again. Oh, something that repeats over and over again. That is brilliant. Give them a heads up of what they're going to be looking at during that classroom session. We're able as scientists to look at a very cool story. And that story of the history of planet Earth is all about the building of rocks. But a lot of students need that aha, the catch. What is it that we need to do here? What do we need to accomplish? If you get them there, then you can do science all day long with them. This is where you get to be like a scientist and begin to experiment. It's more fun to do things than hearing about it. Watch me as I show you how to transfer and pour the sand from the bucket into the container. The reason why I need you to see me do this is that you have to pour the sand at a steady rate. Do you see how that's a pretty steady rate? Yes. Question, how many of you think you're gonna be able to pour with a steady rate? Students need to work together. Teamwork, it's a critical skill that these students must develop for use beyond that classroom. So, when the opportunity arises, let them work in teams. With your partner, I want you to select one of the colors of sand. This is gonna be the first layer in your container. Make sure this is student directed. It's up to them, really for them, not only to help design the activity, but to design what answers they're after. As far as the students, they were allowed to have their own area to work with. And what was good about it, it allows students to not be regimental, but to allow them to be more creative. If we just like read, it, it wouldn't really help, but if we actually do it, then it makes it more funner and it actually helps us. That is your first layer. Now we're going to place a second layer on top of that. And you know what? I am not gonna tell you how long you're gonna pour for. That's gonna be up to you. Yeah. How does 30 seconds sound? Yeah. All right, okay. Oh, look at that, look at that. That oh. looks great. How many people have done three colors so far? Who would wanna do four colors? Remember, nobody learns anything in isolation. Everything that those students learn, every piece of knowledge that they construct really gets inserted into a thinking schema they already have. So lay the foundation for the path on which they're about to take. Which rock layer or which model layer that you have in your container is the oldest? Which one is the oldest? Which one went in there? Think about it. Which one went in there? So by having these kind of lessons that promote and direct them to push their scientific discoveries, it allows them to become better scientists at the end. Students need to analyze the process. Remember, this is not cookbook. They need to think about what they're doing and really come up with an understanding based upon their observations. So, how did the pouring time affect the layer thickness? How did the rate at which the sand was poured affect the layer thickness? Don't tell them because they need to discover this. What causes the thick layer is when you add more time to it. For like 15 seconds, it would cause a thicker layer, but if you wanted a thinner layer, you would do it for five or six seconds, and you would get a thin layer, maybe like the blue on top. You guys have a good time? Yeah! yeah!
Yeah. All right, I'll see you next lesson. Yes, I had a lot of fun and I appreciate my teacher for doing this for us. Yeah, I had fun with science. Yes, I had a lot of fun today. It was really, really fun. I loved it a lot. I had a lot of fun. The kids today had a wonderful time. Um, this was an experiment that was probably something that will be lasting with them. And I know just speaking with them, they were ecstatic about it.